What's up guys? One of the best uses for the Quest 3S, because it is a slight downgrade from the Quest 3, is to give it to your kids, to keep your Quest 3 pristine. But as we all know, giving any technology to our kids can introduce a risk or two. So today I wanted to talk about how to set up a child account and set up all of the safety features that are available here on Quest. Let's get into it. Welcome back to The Construct. First off, you wanna be signed into your Quest 3S already as the device owner. It's a lot easier if we just start this way. While you're in your Quest 3S, go to your profile and go to switch account. Here you have the option to add an account. Now, if your child is over the age of 13, you could easily just put an email address in here. They would check the email and follow some steps from there. So if you are adding a child under the age of 13, you'll see here at the bottom, you're directed to go to meta.com forward slash add child. And you don't have to do this on the headset. It's actually better for you to do this on your phone or a laptop or an iPad or something. What you'll find is that meta.com forward slash add child actually redirects you to family.center.meta.com. So it's just a vanity URL. So once we're on this page, you'll be greeted with the option to add a family member because that's what we need to do to add a child to our 3S. We'll select the create an account for a child because it's the most difficult one. And because our kids are so good at figuring out ways to get around this stuff, Meta has introduced a verification step that requires you to enter your credit card and do a sample purchase to verify that this is a legit transaction. The credit card transaction is only for a dollar and it is returned back to your account. But once you get through all that, it's all good. So after that, you'll have to do the typical things like setting up your child's name and information. And this piece of information isn't actually public. This is just for identifying your child's account. You can use your own email here, or if your child has an email, you can use that. In the next step, you have to set up the Horizon account for your child's account. Now this is public. This is the username and the name that displays on their account in their headset and in multiplayer games. I even tried to come up with something weird here, but even this name was actually taken. It's funny how that happens. Once that's done, you'll see a list of how you're able to supervise this account and what controls you'll have. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And now that your child's account is part of your account, you can add it to whichever headset you wanna add it to. Once you've gotten through all of that, you'll be shown a brief video inside the headset to walk you through how to take care of watching a child while they're using the Quest. And that's it, you're finally in. Now your child can use the Quest on their own and they don't have to crisscross with whatever you might do on your own account as the device owner. But I know what you're thinking, what's preventing my child from just switching the account back to the main account and doing whatever they want? But that's what this security function is for in the settings. So as the device owner, you wanna head down to settings and go to security. And here you can turn on a passcode to use your account. Now this passcode will be prompted whenever you restart the device or when, whenever you switch to this account, even on the 3S. This code will be used anytime someone wants to switch to this account on the 3S even after you reboot the 3S, because kids all know that power cycling can sometimes get you around things, right? And just a word of caution here, this password does not have a recovery feature at all. So if you forget it, you will have to factory reset the quest. This does kind of add a little bit of difficulty. So every time your child wants to use the headset, they'll have to put in this code to at least get going so they can switch to their child account. So if that sounds like it's too cumbersome and you don't wanna to have to keep opening up the headset for your child, there is one slightly less secure option that you can use here on this screen. If you decide you just want to let them use your account and not go through all of the things we've talked about up until this point, you can passcode lock certain apps. So you could passcode lock the browser or any apps that aren't rated for your child's age, and you could do it that way. Make sure that you do actually have a pin for purchasing apps as well if you choose to go this route. So what about the apps that you've actually bought? How can they use them on your Quest 3S if you've downloaded them on your Quest 3? It's pretty simple. As the device owner, when you're inside of your profile, you can turn on sharing apps. Now this will share the apps to the other profiles on the headset, but remember we've just created a child account. So in order to download these apps or use these apps, they still will need to be granted permission from the device owner or parent account in order to use the apps. And it works pretty well. They're able to ask for access to an app right there in the headset. You will get a notification in your headset and on your phone through the Meta app and even an email requesting that you grant access to that app. And once you have, they're able to download the app and play 
as much as they want. A few things to remember, some of the more administrative tasks for your headset really still need to be done with the device owner account. Things like moving recorded clips off of the headset still need to be done with the device owner, but that shouldn't be a problem for someone who's under the age of 13 to ask for permission for these steps. Save files like progress and games will be unique to that user. So they will get the app, but they don't necessarily get the progress you might've made in a game or any of your savings that might be inside of an app. There's a supervision section right in the app that provides all of this control in the palm of your hand. You can monitor how long your child has spent in any particular app and still see what apps they have access to. Additionally, you can actually go into individual apps, review them and see what types of things that are included in the app, what the rating is, what it grants access to. You can even choose to control certain privacy settings that have been previously granted in your child's account. For example, hand and body tracking can be removed from your account right here from the app whenever you want. You can also see their followers that they may have met online in online play. You can actually put limitations on who can follow your child's account or whether or not they can follow other accounts themselves. And needless to say, you can block apps by age rating. This is set by default for child accounts that are under the age of 13. And as for those notifications where your child is asking for access to an app, you can choose whether or not you get those notifications in your headset or just simply on your phone. Somebody in the comments asked for this video specifically and I'm happy to help. There's a lot going on, so I'm sorry I got to it so late. And speaking of everything that's going on, if you're into content like this, maybe you should consider subscribing. And we'll see you here next time in The Construct. Peace.